Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to be proving that deterministic context-free languages are not closed under union. And we can actually show that we can get one more for free from this, which is that they're not closed under uh, intersection either. And the reason for that is actually pretty simple. It's based off De Morgan's laws. Remember De Morgan's law. So De Morgan, what a guy. Uh, Augustus de Morgan, remember his name. So remember the relationship between uh, intersection and union. So if we have L1 union L2 is equal to the complement of L1, uh, not union, intersection L2 complement, and then the whole thing complemented again. Well, we saw uh, before that DCFLs are in fact closed under complement. So if they were closed in their intersection, then uh, L1 complement is a DCFL, we were assuming. L2 bar is also a DCFL. Assuming that they are closed under complement, so this under part is DCFL, the extra complement gives us shows that it's also a DCFL yet again. So that would show that it's closed under union. But since it's not closed under union, then if it were closed under intersection, then it would be closed under union, but we're going to show that it's not closed under union. So it's in, in fact not closed under either one of these two. So it's actually one of the main um, classes of languages that is not closed under anything other of the operations we care about other than for complement, which is kind of surprising. It's, it's either union or intersection or both, um, but here is neither one of the two. So uh, let's look at this language. So let's look at L, which is A to the N, B to the N, C to the N, and at least zero. And this language is obviously not context-free. We've already shown that. And uh, so it's, therefore, it's not even a DCFL. But uh, what I claim is that if we take the complement of this thing, then I claim that the complement is, in fact, a DCFL. And I, I mentioned this, but I didn't actually prove it. So uh, what are the things that we need to prove this? So one thing we can show pretty quickly is that DCFLs are closed under union. And you may think, isn't that a contradiction? But it's under union with uh, regular languages. And intersection too. But... Um, I'm not going to prove it here, but the basic idea is that we use a product construction. Okay, so it's exactly the same product construction as if you used a PDA and a DFA, but here you're using a DPDA and a DFA. And if you do the, prod the cross product con construction correctly, then the resulting thing is a, in fact, a DPDA. So they are closed under union in the same way that they would be. Uh, closed under union for DFAs. It's just now you incorporate the stack on the transitions corresponding to what the DPDA would have done because the, the one corresponding to a regular language is a DFA and it doesn't have anything to do with the stack at all. So that's all we, that we need here. Okay, so then what are the components of this language? So for this language, what do we have? Well, any, so what are the strings that are in the complement? So it's anything uh, with a BA in the string, uh, CB in the string, or uh, CA in the string. So if it has any one of those three substrings, then it must be in the complement language because the original language had A's followed by B's followed by C's. Um, if it's in this language, which is, um, so if it's not one of those three, it must have A's followed by B's followed by C's, but the counts are wrong. So if we have uh, A to the I, B to the uh, J, oops, C to the K, where uh, I is not equal to J, then it must be in the complement. If we have very similar language, so exactly the same exponents, except now that we have i is not equal to uh, k at the very end. The, the third variable here could be anything that you want it to be. Um, and the third one 
is where we have the last two exponents not being the same. So j is not equal to k. Okay. Um, what I mentioned before, actually I'll use uh, green. So this language right here, any string that has one of those three substrings, this is regular. And you can uh, represent it by a regex pretty quickly. So like sigma star BA, sigma star union, and then the same thing for the other two uh, substrings. So what I claim here is that these three languages right here are DCFLs. And uh, what is the argument here? So uh, I'm not going to do the whole argument, but this is the basic idea. So um, since all of these three languages are extremely similar to each other, um, I'm just going to only pick on one, this first one. And, and the other ones can be easily adapted to, to work with this argument. So let's say that we have a bunch of uh, A's at the beginning, B's here, and C's here. So remember that the language of um, A to the N, B to the N, where, where N is at least zero, is regular. Uh, oh, oh my god, no, no, is a DCFL. I'm going on autopilot. So, so this is a DCFL. So uh, note that what the structure of this language is saying, I'll go to brown here. So this one is saying that the the number of A's is not equal to the number of B's. The number of C's can be anything that you want. So uh, this number right here can be anything. It's just that uh, it's either the case that the number of A's is more than the number of B's or less because it's not equal. So let's just say, for example, that uh, this count is I, this count is J, and I is, let's say, bigger than J. Then what is the, so what do we need to do in this case? We need to uh, push the A's onto the stack. And uh, when we get to the B's, uh, start popping in tandem. Uh, yeah, so I should uh, say B's here. So start popping B's in tandem. Uh, actually, no, that's, that's not right either. Uh, start popping when reading B's. That's what I meant to say. So uh, if that's the case, then what will happen is we'll run out of B's onto the stack. And uh, what do we do then? Uh, so we're right here, we're finished reading the B's, we're starting to read a C, but there's an A on the stack. Then what will happen is, if that's the case, then we will transition to that accept state. Remember that we can assume that the DPDA has exactly one accept state. So if this is the case, so if we encounter a C with a uh, a on the stack, go to Q accept. Okay, um, but because that would say that the number of A's is bigger than the number of B's. Now let's suppose that we have where uh, I is less than J. So if this is the case, then we will match them up in tandem until we see we still have B's left in the string because there's more B's than A's in this case. Then in, if that's the case, so we're encountering B on, this, on, the, uh, on the input and we still have, there's nothing on the stack other than that special symbol that we put at the beginning, the dollar sign. So here, uh, if we find a B with a dollar sign on the stack, uh, then go to Q accept. Okay, and the only other possible case is when they're equal to each other, in which point you'll find C with a dollar sign on the stack. So if we encounter uh, C with the dollar sign on the stack, then go to Q reject. So remember we had that one 
a dead state where we just read the rest of the input when we showed the closed under complement part. Um, and we had two states, Q accept, Q reject. And these, two, since there's only two characters on the stack, which are whatever you push on when you're uh, reading the A part, so let's just say we're pushing A's, and the dollar sign, then these two cases are every possible thing that can happen when you encounter a C, which makes it deterministic. And, and this right here, uh, we popped uh, A's when we were reading the B's, or whatever you pushed before. And in this case, we have B with dollar sign, which is the only other possible character. And so therefore, it's deterministic there, too. Um, and then for the other cases, well, what if we see an A over here? Or if we see a B or C over here, we can add transitions like we've done before that go to Q reject because in this case it has to be A's followed by B's followed by C's. And in fact, that's all that you actually need to show for this language. Now, I'll leave you to actually do this for the other languages, um, but that's all that we need to show for this language. The other two are extremely similar. Okay, so all of these are DCFLs, I claim. And so therefore, uh, this whole mess right here, if they're closed under union, this whole thing would be a DCFL. But that's not possible because uh, that would imply that this language without the complement is a DCFL, but that's not possible. So that actually tells us something interesting that we, one of these three or more is, uh, and when you do the union of the two, sorry, if you pick two of these, at least one of the two pairs is not a DCFL. Uh, because if if every single pair was a DCFL, then the whole thing would be a DCFL uh, too, except for maybe the unions with the third one might not be a DCFL. So the point is that um, at some point when you're unioning these, we'll end up with a language that's not a DCFL. And we don't know right now, at least from this proof, which one that is. One of them must be when you union the two, but we have no idea which of the pairs would cause it to be a not a DCFL, which is pretty interesting. So I would recommend you put into the comments, or at least think about, uh, is it the case that we take these two and it's not a DCFL, or this pair, or this pair, or maybe when we do the union, it is a DCFL, but when this union, you union it with this third one, then it's not a DCFL. So one, at one path along the way, at some point, you must uh, end up with a language that's not a DCFL. Because if you didn't, then if you had a DCFL and you union the regular languages, then you would end up with a DCFL. So one of, at some, something goes wrong right here, so to speak. Okay, so that's all that I wanted to show here. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you can like and subscribe to the channel. As always, there are many other links in the channel if you want to support the channel further. I'm doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring right now, so if you want to schedule something, contact me. And as always, I'll see you next time.